Hello everyone, my name is Jetty, Wild Gears artist and collaborator on the new nested oblong gear set from Wild Gears. Um, this beauty was released last Sunday and uh, I've been seeing word that people are receiving their kits so I thought that I would just share a quick little uh, design to get you started on this kit and maybe get you familiar and get you thinking in, a, in the right way. Um, and there's actually no wrong way to use this kit. It's pretty endless with its uh, possibilities. <clears throat> so um, to set up, you're going to need some big paper for sure. Um, I'm using I'm using this uh, mixed media paper by Canson, and uh, I'm using a 14 by 17. Um, sized sheet here and uh, I actually have it portrait right now this is how I like to set it up um, typically with this kit just because I can fit two on the same page so um, and then I like using poster putty you can probably see it underneath here already And uh, I typically use the straight edge of the kit to just line it up with the paper to get it as straight as possible. Use my eye <clears throat> to get it center. It doesn't always matter though. If I'm just sketching or practicing or exploring new ideas, I don't try to get it too perfect. Um, so you'll see it's kind of hanging off. The paper a little bit that's not gonna that's not gonna matter or affect um, most of the time even when this is pushed over all the way the design isn't gonna end up off of the paper um, so what we have here is the 210 180 ring from the full page set that you can find on the Wild Gears website um, if you don't already have this kit I highly recommend getting the full page because this 210 180 ring it's pretty essential to uh, this kit functioning um, because as you can see this fits directly and snugly within our large rack here which is pretty much the main function of this kit is this larger rack and then the smaller rack the 180 which actually fits snugly in here so um, either of these racks, the larger or the smaller one, can be used independently or on their own. And I'll definitely get to teaching you all and showing you all some, uh, some uh, designs with both this one alone and them in combination with each other. Um, but today, I'm going to show you uh, one of the first designs I kind of discovered on this kit months ago. So, we're going to take our 210 ring. We're going to bring it all the way to the, to the left. I like working from left to right, kind of like writing. You don't have to, though. You can work from right to left. Um, if I'm going to try to make something more symmetrical, I do like starting in the center, and then I'll, you know, I'll work that way and then this way. But today we're going to work from one side to the other because we're not going to make a symmetrical design. This is going to end up being asymmetrical, which can be really fun. Um, it feels a lot more flowy. So you'll see, if this ring is fit snug directly on the left here, you'll see it fits to, uh, really snug with this corner here. It's sized exactly the same size as the 210. And there's actually no space there. And you'll notice, if I just try to move the top rack or the bottom rack just one tooth over, I kind of have to push this and work it in, and then these teeth are actually touching each other. You, you probably, you might not be able to see it on my camera, but you'd be able to see it on your own kit. Um, this this is just kind of hard to work in and out of, and I've noticed it'll actually kind of throw my design off. So I tend to just start with the ring um, about two or about two teeth to either direction <clears throat> so that it uh, has more freedom to move. 
Our second piece here is going to be the 120 uh, double dense gear that you can find in the 120 gear set. Uh, again, you can find that on the Wild Gears website. If you don't uh, have the 120 gear, you can use uh, another ratio, another gear um, for the same repetition I'm about to show you. In fact, you could use uh, this 135. I believe that's in the full page as well. It could be plentiful. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the full page though. Uh, this is a a four point design, as you can see. Maybe this met up four times, and this one's a th a three point design. And I just prefer to use simpler ratios, like a three or a four or even a two, um, for a lot of these designs where I'm repeating it a lot, just because it it ends up being a lot less crowded. So what we're going to do is start off with our 120, and I typically, you don't have to start in any specific spot, but I typically like to start at 12 o'clock, more or less. I always start at the top on 12 o'clock. I've definitely seen other artists that their go-to is 6 o'clock down here. It's completely up to you. Um, like I said, there's really no wrong way to use this kit. There's no wrong way to use any of these kits. Um, they're really just exploring uh, tools. So I have a Stedler Tri Plus Fine Liner here. Um, I like using these pens a lot, um, just because they have a, they have a lot of really great colors. I do find um, I've like looked back at pieces from um, a year and a half to two years ago, and they have faded and lost some color. So there is that. Um, if you want your pieces to be more archival. And like permanent, I actually recommend more archival ink. Micron um, does great stuff, and they have a lot of different um, they have a lot of different size nibs. But um, I'm using the Stedler today, and we're gonna start off now for these. Um, typically, when I'm first starting. And I'm starting on A1. Right now I'm on A1, that's the penhole. Um, I try to guide it for the first few penholes because I find the farther out the penhole is to the, the closer it is to the outside of the gear, um, the harder it can be to rotate it. So here we have it. We have this uh, 3 to 2 ratio. And uh, we're going to continue. So we started on penhole A1. We're going to move to penhole B1. And we're actually going to take the top rack here. And we're going to move it one tooth to the right. While we leave the bottom of the rack in the same spot. And we keep the starting position. You can see I started it with this little, uh, with this penhole here. That's kind of how I recognize where my starting point was, so I can keep track. So, um, we move it one tooth to the right, we move our pen hole down one, and then we repeat. And again, I still kind of use my other hand at this point to guide, especially when I get to the point, I use it to guide so that I don't go off track, because on the outside it can be a little more difficult. Then we move it one more over, make sure you keep your starting point, go one pen hole down, in this case it's C1, and let's continue. One pen, one tooth over. We're going to shift one pen hole down. Now we're at D1. And now we're going to repeat. Now, a lot of these patterns could look a little funny at first, but as long as you keep 
the same repetition, it will uh, it'll make sense eventually. And by repetition, I mean the motion that you repeat after each pattern is drawn. In this case, our pattern is moving the top rack one to the right and moving a pen hole down while keeping the same starting point. That's our repetition. Now we're on A2. We've moved one tooth to the right. We uh, call this lateral rotation when we are moving just one side of the rack over any direction. Lateral rotation. At this point, I'm a little further in, so I don't have to use my hand as much to guide it. Now we're on B2. All right. And once you uh, get used to these repetitions, you can really just get into the flow of it and uh, start doing some of that, you know, introspective thought. I definitely get really deep into my head as I get deeper into these lines. There we go. We're on A3. We'll move it one to the right, move the pen hole down one. We're on B3 now. All right. One to the right. We're at C3. PO. <laughs> I knew you were thinking it. Anyways, um, all my Star Wars fans out there. D3, same starting point. Moved it over one tooth to the right on the top rack. Sweet. Now we're just in it. We're just in the groove. Eventually, um, you'll get a muscle memory down and these repetitions will become second nature almost but don't try to make it too automated i've definitely zoned out and trusted myself too much and then i'll actually go outside of the pattern because i'm a little bit too confident in where i am so now we go to c4 sweet at this point we're starting to see where this pattern is going and where it's going to take us. Repetition legitimizes. A5. So how's your day been? I don't know what period of time you're occupying right now, but I hope whatever time it is that you're having a good time. It's Monday for me. It's about 10 o'clock. I'm winding down for the evening. This is typically when I uh, come into my workspace to do some work. I'm kind of a night owl in that aspect, but Whenever you can find time to create, that's the right time. All right. We're on A6. Yeah, it's a Monday for me. It was a good start to my week. Didn't do too much. I made this pasta, an avocado pesto 
pasta. It's one of my favorite recipes. It's like a half a cup of olive oil. You maybe squeeze a lemon in there. Put a, you know, bunch of basil. I don't know how to measure basil. I just put what looks like a fair amount. What's not going to be overpowering. Um, the original recipe calls for like three cloves of garlic, but I put like five or seven in there. I really love garlic, so. And um, then you throw an avocado in there and you blend that up in your food processor. And then you'll throw some pine nuts or sunflower seeds. Traditionally, pesto is made with uh, pine nuts, so. But you can really use any nuts. I like throwing sunflower seeds in there. I like throwing some uh, pistachios. That's one of my favorites for sure. But I had that for lunch. Um, and then I took a big old nap. Pasta nap. We're on C7. And, uh, sorry if I'm just flying through this. I realize you all might not have the same muscle memory as me, but you will get there. And I promise you, you can pause this video at any time. You can reach out to me and leave a comment. Let me know. Maybe I was going a bit too quick. We're on A8, so we're restarting on A again. You see this little finger? This little finger that's coming out there. I like that. Now we're on B8. There we go. Yeah, it was a good start to my week. Good Monday. I had a pretty long weekend. My weekend actually started on Wednesday, sort of. Maybe not. Maybe that doesn't count, but I spent my weekend in San Francisco and Santa Cruz playing a few shows up there, making some music for some friends and some strangers, which is always nice. I was up there on a Wednesday night playing at the Knockout in the Mission District. And then uh, the next day I played at the Cava Bar in Santa Cruz, downtown Santa Cruz, and that was just a blast. My friend Ian Crispy invited me and my friend Jake Pador to uh, come and make some soundscapes. Uh, we like making ambient music and like just music for people to like self-reflect and get some introspection going. Is introspection a word? I'm not sure. We're on D9. We're about to restart at our A's again. Remember, there's four tiers. We have A, B, C, and D on these double dense gears. I really like this double dense deer, gear. Now we're on A10, so we're on our 10s. And then um, Saturday, I played another show at the Dali Museum here in Monterey. And uh, that was just a, such a beautiful experience. Played with my friends uh, Destiny and Jake Pador again. He actually played with me at all three shows, the San Francisco and the Santa Cruz and this last one at the Dali Museum and it was just such a beautiful experience and I completely unintentionally I opened up my set with a very loose ambient cover of Don McLean's Vincent starry starry night paint your palette blue and gray you know 
It's about Vincent van Gogh. And um, not even thinking, like, oh, he's a painter. And I'm playing at the Dali Museum. And then later on in my set, I decided I would sample the sound of Bob Ross painting. There we go. And then my friend threw a paintbrush up on stage. And so I started playing my bass with the paintbrush. And I started playing the chords again to Vincent over the sound of Bob Ross painting, playing my bass with a paintbrush in the Dali Museum. And it was just absurd. It was like so much performance art and I wasn't even trying and it was just a beautiful, beautiful realization and beautiful crowd, beautiful community. I'm so blessed. So we're on A12 now. We only have a few more uh, levels to go before we can before we complete the design. By the way, there's no complete. I mean, you can you can stop at any point and say it's complete. You you really decide what is what and what the rules are when you're here. But I'm going to go all the way to the last drop. The last pinhole. So we just did A12. We're going to move it again. One to the right. Go to B12. Same starting point. Look out on a summer's day With eyes that know the darkness of my soul Shadows on the hills Sketch the leaves and the daffodils Something like that. Oh, what a beautiful song. What have you been listening to? I have uh, definitely been really into the new Bon Iver album, I, I. Um, I think it's brilliant. I've had that on repeat actually the last week or so. Ooh, we're coming so close. B13, C13, D13. And then we're on A14. And that's it. I'm not going to fill in this last hole because there's technically supposed to be three others between this one. So I would actually leave a big gap if I filled that one in. You're allowed to fill that one in, though. I'm choosing not to. And we move our gears. And we see this. Beautiful, beautiful little finger reaching into the cosmos. Maybe it's a wing. Kind of see an eyeball down here. It's always up to interpretation, but I hope you uh, learned something. I hope uh, you're excited to try this out and uh, looking forward to seeing what you create. Uh, Feel free to tag me or send me a photo of your creations. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions, particularly about this kit. Um, and uh, like I said, this can be found on the Wild Gears website, wildgears.com. Um, you can go to the Buy Wild Gears section and you will find this kit. You will find the full page and all of his other kits, the 120 and... Um, his compact. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description below. And um, yeah, follow me um, on Instagram at SpiralCatWorks. And for more lessons in the future, make sure to uh, pop on over to my Patreon page, uh, patreon.com-jettymail. I'll uh, leave a 
link to that in the description below as well. Um, I'm going to start releasing regular lessons over at that channel. So thank you for all joining and uh, taking this trip through the ink sphere with me. And I'll talk to you next time, friends.